After completing this lesson, you will be able to switch to the Inventor Studio environment, create a camera for rendering, modify rendering settings, and generate a rendered image. Even though you can generate compelling images just by using the image-based lighting in the view style, there's another level that can be achieved inside of Inventor. That is, creating an actual rendering. To access the Inventor Studio and the rendering tools, go to the Environments tab and start Inventor Studio. This will open up a separate environment inside of Inventor. Immediately, the image-based lighting will re-engage. It might appear that we were just redoing what we were able to do using view styles. But the rendering tools inside of Inventor Studio give us a great deal more control and allow us to go beyond just image-based lighting. First, let's establish a camera. What a camera does is allows us to store a point of view that can be edited and reused at any time for additional renderings. Starting the camera tool, first, we'll set a target for the camera. Then we can establish where a rough placement for the camera will be, normal to that face. Once we've established this, we can double click on the camera itself and use the manipulators to reposition the camera using planes or just axes. Clicking OK, we can select the target and manipulate the target as well. Getting a rough idea of what the placement is, let's make one more adjustment, sliding this just off to the side. We'll go back to the camera dialog, and we can change the zoom settings to set up the focus on the area. We can also set up depth of field if we like, that will allow us to create renderings that as the rendering is generated, objects farther away from the camera will begin to go out of focus. Clicking OK will create a camera in the browser. We can right click on this camera and say set view to camera. Now we see that with our object in the screen, it looks like the target is just a little too high, so we can go ahead and make modifications. Another approach that we can use to creating a camera is to simply set a point of view that we like, make sure that we're engaged in perspective, right click in the browser and select create camera from view. This will create another camera that is based on the current view. Selecting the render image tool, we can choose which camera we'd like to use for a rendering point of view. We'll select camera two. We can set the width and height of the image, or we can use presets. Then we can change the lighting style. This will allow us to experiment with different lighting styles without having to change the lighting in the design. We'll set the lighting to photo booth. And then we can go to the output tab and choose where we'd like to save an image file. We can also save after the rendering if we want to explore and make sure the rendering is the quality that we want before generating a file. Then we go to the renderer tool and we can choose how we want to render this. We can say, let the render run a certain amount of time. We can cap the number of iterations the rendering will achieve. An iteration will improve the view with each cycle. Or we can select until satisfactory. This will allow us to use the preview to view the quality of the rendering as it's generating and stop it when the quality image gets high enough. For now, we'll use render by iteration. We'll set the number to 50. And let's select render. This will bring up the render output window. And as each iteration is generated, we'll see that the quality of the image changes and improves with shadows developing, with highlights developing. Now already, I'm able to see through the preview that while this rendering looks good, maybe I'd like just a little something more special applied to it because we're going to be using this image for marketing materials. I'm going to stop the progress of the rendering and close the preview window. 
Maybe what I need is a little different light. I'll select local lights. And very much like creating a camera, I'll select a target and locate a light along the axis. We'll rough this in. Then make modifications to its location. I want it to highlight kind of from behind, create a different type of shadow. We'll use it as a point light. We'll set the illumination intensity to be fairly high, just as an experiment, and change the color from white to uh, maybe something just to give a little contrast to the blue. We'll say OK. Now let's start our rendering again using camera 2, photo booth lighting, all the same options. Let's begin the render again. We can already see the orange highlight, and we can see the shadow being created by that point light. We'll accelerate the progress of this rendering for the sake of time. We can add any number of these point lights, and of course we can make modifications to the image-based lighting as well. It takes very little time, rephrase. Making these modifications makes it very, rephrase. Making a handful of modifications can have a very, very, rephrase. Making a handful of modifications can have a dramatic effect on the appearance of your model as you create output to share with others. As you can see, in roughly three minutes, we've created a great looking image. And now let's go ahead and save that image. We can select a location. Now we can share that rendering with others. When you're done, you can close the render window and select Finish Inventor Studio to return back to the design.